Hey everybody, welcome back to Cat's Kitchen. I'm so glad you guys are back here with me for another episode. And today we're going to be cooking up a holiday meal for my family. So we have some you know, family in town and we're gonna be visiting family all weekend long. So um, we actually have a few different get togethers to go to. Tonight is dinner at my house. And then um, I'm making up over here some meat sauce for a lasagna that I'm gonna be making and taking to another family gathering um, later on this weekend. So tonight what we're gonna be making are roast beef sandwiches. I have a rump roast and a sirloin roast here. Um, so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna prepare that. I'm also, my sister brought me some Brussels sprouts. So we're gonna be making those for our veggie. And then I'm thinking about making some cheesy uh, potato. Uh, so what we're doing right now is I actually have some beef browning for, um, in my big pot here for some meat sauce that I'm gonna make. I'm gonna be taking a lasagna over to one of the gatherings later on this weekend. And then right now for dinner tonight, we're gonna to have roast beef sandwiches. So I have a rump roast and a sirloin roast and we're gonna get these prepared. So let's get right into it. I'm just cutting these out of the bag and then I'm gonna be rinsing them off and then putting them right onto my cutting board here with my paper towels so that they can drain. These have been sitting out at room temperature for at least 20 minutes to relax. Always want to do that with your meat. That way your meat will be a lot more tender. That way. Okay. These are both three pound rows. The sirloin roast is a little bit easier to cook. The rump roast here is a little bit more difficult. And the reason why that, it, why that is, is because the rump roast can sometimes be tough unless you cook it enough. I'm gonna get rid of these bags and go to the, wash my hands and everything and I'll be right back. All right, so like I mentioned, these are three pounds a piece, and it just worked out that way. I didn't plan for that. There's our oven heating up for us. I preheated our oven to 375. I'm kind of following a recipe that I found, um, but I'm not really married to it just because, you know, I just kind of like to see how long people are cooking the rump roast and the sirloin roast for and at what temperatures. So that's kind of what I'm using as a guide. We're trying to shoot for mid rare, um, at least in the middle cuts. Obviously when you have a roast like this, that's kind of like oblong shape, you know, your end pieces are gonna cook a little faster than the middle because the middle is obviously more dense. So, when you're feeding a crowd of people, that actually works out really well because then you end up getting different temperatures for different people just off of one roast. So some people may like medium, well, or mid-rare. So that will hopefully accommodate. Hopefully, what I'm shooting for is mid-rare in the middle and medium on the ends because I think everyone likes those two temperatures. Now you can trim these if you need to. Obviously you can see this one came um, bound with butcher twine. I'm just gonna leave that on there for the cooking process because that's what it's intended for. faster if I undo it. I know that. Because then it won't all be in one. Let's take let's take a look. I think last year I did take this off if I remember correctly. Because it was taking a long time to cook. So because I did it last year I'm going to do the same here. There 
we go. So this is also another one where you're gonna have an oblong shape. That's why they bind it like that. Okay, get rid of all this. Okay, so what we're gonna do is I have my cast, my large cast iron pan heating up. We're gonna hit these with some salt and then we're just gonna give this a hard sear because we wanna form a crust around our meat here. So I'm gonna turn our oven on to about mid, mid high. I'm gonna turn our fan on here. Cause it's probably gonna get a little smoky. salt on right now because I don't want all the other seasonings to burn in the pan. All right, so what you guys see me doing in just the previous clip is I was just tilting the pan to let the oil get evenly distributed over the pan and where the meat was searing. And then now you see me holding the piece of meat uh, with two pairs of tongs. See there, I'm tipping the pan there to get that oil evenly um, coating the meat in the pan. And I'm just holding um, the meat on the edges now with my two tongs. And what we're really doing here is we have to sear off each side of the meat so that the juices stay inside while it's baking in the oven. This is going to offer you guys a really great crust on the outside. Plus, like I said, we're going to keep our meat nice and juicy by sealing off these ends and pieces. Now, I don't unravel the rump roast here. If you see, I'm just holding it together and I'm just hitting the top and the bottom with the pan. And then I just keep moving that all up. That's actually um, avocado oil. Since avocado oil has a higher smoke point than olive oil, that's what I'm using here. And honestly, this is the best sear that I've ever gotten. Uh, it's the most even. And I noticed what I learned recently is if you don't use enough oil in your pan and make sure that it's distributed well throughout the cooking time, you won't get a really nice even sear like this. Plus the cast iron helps as well, but obviously I'm cooking on electric here, so um, electric can be very uh, temperamental sometimes with how it distributes the heat. If you happen to see any large fat cap on your piece of meat, you wanna definitely render that down as best as you can. Um, that'll just help in the overall process for the cook time and everything. And then obviously when it goes in the oven, it's gonna cook some more, but you at least wanna just try to cauterize it a little bit and sear it down. And um, that'll make 
you know, the rendering process that much easier in the oven. Now I brought out the little scale and I did weigh these. I told you guys these are three pound roasts. I was looking at some recipes. They were saying approximately, unless you're going to um, use a thermometer to check these, approximately 20 minutes per pound at about 350 to 375, depending on how hot your oven runs. So while our roast is searing off, we're going to make the, kind of like a marinade for it, but we're going to make our seasoning now. We're going to start with olive oil, and this is what we're going to base the meat with after it sears and before we roast. And then we're going to add in salt, pepper, Italian seasoning and some garlic powder. I may have to make up a little bit more of this, but I'm just kind of eyeballing what we're going to need for these two rows. Okay, everybody, check out these roasts. They really seared up beautifully. We seared them off on all sides. They're looking really, really good. This is probably the best even, the most even sear that I've gotten um, in a long time. So like I said, just you wanna have a little bit more oil in your pan to definitely coat it, and that'll help your, your meat to get a nice even sear like that. Okay, so we've got our kind of like a little vinaigrette here. Well, I guess it's not a vinaigrette because it doesn't have any vinegar in it. Just our marinade. We're gonna brush this on. And then our oven is already preheated to 375. The instructions said to do 375 for about a half hour and then back it down to 275. And then just cook low and slow. So because we seared it, because I think what they're trying to do is an oven sear, what I think I'm gonna do is maybe do 375 for about 15, 20 minutes. I'll keep an eye on it. And then I will back it down to the 275 for the remainder of the time. Looking good and smelling good already. Let me know what you guys usually make for Christmas dinner. Do you guys make something a little different every year? Do you stick to the same thing?
I made roast last year, but we did like a traditional, more of a traditional roast. I did cook it in the oven though. Usually I make my roast in the crock pot. But I figured this year it'd be nice to have like a roast beef sandwich, a little more casual, but still with a really good high quality meat. So I'm gonna pop our roast now in the oven, 375, and I'll check in about 15 minutes. Okay, friends, so next what we have is I have the tea kettle on because we're gonna need it to rehydrate our potatoes that we're gonna be making. So I have, let's see here, one, two, three, four. I have five onions here. Now what I want for my roast beef sandwich is a nice caramelized onion to go on top of it. So I'm gonna be, that's why I'm using so many onions too. Um, one, they cook down and two, we're all obviously having company. So we need a little bit more onions and they will cook down significantly. So when you're making caramelized onions, always make a little more than what you think you need. And they're so good. I mean, honestly, even people that don't like onions, if you try caramelized onions, they usually enjoy those better because when you caramelize your onions, you bring it, you're bringing out the sweetness of the onion. So you get a completely different experience. And some of these onions I have to take out the center because of the sprouting. Okay guys, so what we're making here are cheesy potatoes. I'm not really going off of a recipe here. I'll try to find one for you, but um, this made quite a bit because every time I use these dehydrated potatoes, they're really, really good. These are from Sam's Club, but I forget how much they rehydrate. Um, granted, there's directions on the back of the box, but sometimes when I'm cooking for a crowd, you know, I'd rather have a little bit more for leftovers and if people want to take some home, then obviously not enough. So I tried to um, do the best I could there. But you can use hash browns from the freezer section, you know, either the little shaved hash browns or the little squares, you know, that are all cubed up, whatever you like. Here I'm just rehydrating my dehydrated potatoes, obviously, with my hot tea water and my dad came over and he was chatting with me in the background so he is telling me stories there so if you see me moving around and <laughs> I'm just telling him stories and we were just having a good time so I told him I said come on over and let's kick off this party because uh, everyone else wasn't there yet so and Mark was working Anyway, you can see my onions are searing off in the skillet. And I have some avocado oil in there as well, along with some salt and pepper. Just do salt and pepper to taste. And now what I'm going to do here is let my potatoes rehydrate. They, they don't really take that long. If you heat up water like I did, it usually only takes about maybe a good five, 10 minutes for them to rehydrate, and then we'll move on to our other steps. So I'm just giving our potatoes a good mix there, just to get the, make sure the water is in, fully incorporated in those dehydrated potatoes. And then I'm just gonna move that off of my work sur surface on a little trivet so that they can cool down. And next I have several onions here. I'm just gonna continue to slice these all up. I need some of these onions for my meat marinara sauce that I'm making for my in-laws the next day when we go to visit them for Christmas. So I will be adding some of these onions to that meat sauce that is cooking on that stock pot back there on my stove. And then the rest of these onions we're going to caramelize for our roast beef sandwiches. Really the trick to this is just slicing them very, very thin and you know, if you don't want to add pepper, you don't have to. I 
would at least recommend salt to these. That way um, it helps pull the moisture out of the onion a lot faster while it's searing. And it'll help speed up your caramelization process. Alrighty guys, so at this point we can start working with our potatoes. I have two cans of cream of chicken here. We're also gonna be adding sour cream and cheese to this, along with other seasonings. And the cheese that I ended up using was, ended up, honestly, I just ended up looking in my fridge to see what I had. I usually always have white cheddar, so I used white cheddar, um, I believe mozzarella, and then I had some Asiago Parmesan and a Romano blend, so it ended up being a five cheese mix. Um, these end up being really, really good. Um, like I said, this just made a little too much for what we needed. I probably only needed about maybe two thirds of this, but it was all good in the end. Everyone enjoyed it. Um, I would just adjust the seasonings to your liking and I'll be showing you the seasonings here in the next clip. Okay friends, so here's where I'm starting to season. I'm doing salt and pepper to taste. I'm doing about two tablespoons of garlic powder. And our minced garlic about a good one tablespoon. And I end up putting in uh, towards the end about three tablespoons of parsley. We're adding in about one cup of sour cream and I'm just shaking up my half and half there and we're going to add, you can either do half and half or milk, whatever you have on hand, anywhere between a half a cup to one cup. It just helps it loosen up and right there I have about three cups of cheese of your choice. I told you which ones I was using before. We're part Italian, so we like to talk with our hands. So that's <laughs> that's what we're doing. Dad and I are sharing stories. We're going to give this a real good mix here. And then I'm just going to add the rest of our ingredients. Mix it well. And then I'm going to pour it all into a baking dish. This fills up a 13 by nine baking dish. And we had about, I think we had a good 10 people over, 10 to 12 people over. So if you needed to feed closer to 20 people, I think this would probably be, you know, perfect for that. But like I said, I did give everyone leftovers to take home. So they were happy with that. So in the back here, I'm just stirring our onions with the tongs. I had to gradually add in the onions for how big of a batch we had. So I'm just doing that periodically as they cook down. And then now I'm starting to add in my half and half to these potatoes. You can see they needed a little bit of moisture. Um, the original recipe that I was watching a video on, on this, um, but the original recipe didn't really call for any of that. So I was like, I think that's a good idea to add that in there. Now we're baking this at 350 for a good 45 minutes to an hour, just till it's nice and crispy on top. So now we have our Brussels sprouts and 
I am always looking for new ways to cook vegetables because vegetables are one of my favorites. Uh, Brussels sprouts, I noticed that if you cook them, if you overcook them, they actually turn bitter. So um, I recently saw where people were just slicing them in half, cutting the little end off, slicing them in half, and then just roasting them in the oven, you know, with some olive oil and some seasoning. So that's what we're going to do with these guys here. Really, really simple. Honestly, using the oven is probably one of the easiest ways that I've found to cook in general and especially cook for a large crowd because the stove top, you kind of have to watch it a little bit more, but if you're using the oven, really you're just preparing everything, you're seasoning it, you're putting it in a pan or you know a baking dish, whatever you gotta do, and then baking it. And you set the timer and you check it and then you pull it out, let it rest and it's done. So that's why I really like oven cooking. Because the only thing that we're going to have stove top for this meal are the caramelized onions that we're working on now. And then we're going to make an au jus a little bit later on for dipping the roast beef sandwiches into them. Just also wanted to mention on some of these Brussels sprouts, you may want to remove the outer little leaf part to the Brussels sprout um, for two reasons. One, it may be the outer leaves are the older leaves, so they may be damaged or, you know, discolored. And then the other reason too is because they are older, they're not as sweet and tender as the younger leaves that are more inside of the Brussels sprout. Okay, so as you can see here, I'm just loading up all of our sliced Brussels sprouts into my 13 by 9 there. I'm adding some olive oil, salt and pepper to taste, and these fit perfectly here in my 13 by 9. If you want these to get a little extra crispy, then you can divide these into a few different uh, baking sheets or pans if you like. I'm adding some garlic powder now. And then we're just gonna mix these up. And then I just bake these right alongside of our cheesy potatoes at 350 and I just checked them at about 30 minutes and I believe overall they needed the same amount of time as the potatoes. So between I would say 30 to 45 minutes, you'll just wanna take a look and see how dark they're getting. All right, so we have our Brussels sprouts in the oven now, and I'm just giving our onions a little stir here. You can see how much all those onions have cooked down. I think I started with about five medium onions, so it's definitely a lot there. I probably put one onion in our sauce because that sauce is pretty full too back there, so four of them are allocated here for our sandwiches. And right now we are pretty good as far as time-wise for the party. So what I'm gonna do is start cleaning up after myself and start putting things away and doing the dishes that I can. I like to do this as I go in between while things are cooking. And normally if I do it this way, I actually end up with time way before guests arrive. Um, usually anywhere between it could be 45 minutes up to even two hours before guests come that I have time to myself to relax, to get freshened up. 
So just a little tidbit there for you guys, um, you know, that you're trying to entertain and and you want to be able to enjoy the party too. So that's why either prepping a few days ahead of time or, you know, even just making sure that your time is devoted well on the day of the party. So, yeah, so I will show you guys back here once everything is all ready and laid out for the guests and then you'll see everything out of the oven. So here's everything. We have our buns, our cheesy potatoes, then our Brussels sprouts. Everyone really liked those. And then we have some of our caramelized onions with pickles and mustard for people. And then we have our jus sauce. I didn't show making this, but I can leave a recipe for you guys down below. And then of course we have our beef. So guys, thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see y'all on the next one. Bye-bye, friends.